from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. To Central and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Miami, Florida, are Apostle of King Jesus International Ministry, Guillermo Maldonado, Senior Pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, Tullian Division, CEO of the Miracle Channel, Leon Fontaine, Recording Artist and Pastor, Javed. Ready to take your calls, prayer partners from around America. Praise the Lord program, no matter where you're watching, anywhere around the world, this entire group right here in South Florida, they love Jesus yes, here tonight. Thank you. Is that true? Come on now. And I want to say this, that it's not very often that we're hosting, and I have my pretty little pink-haired mama <laughs> yes. with me, and her name is Jenny Crouch. Okay. You yes. love yes. the uh, not yeah not only Florida but you love the subject oh. of the gospel of oh. grace. Why why do you love the gospel? You of know grace? what? It has just transformed my thinking. Okay, how? How? Just peace, joy. Just it just it just absolutely takes it off of your back and puts it onto Jesus where it should be. And it's just an amazing. Okay, new are you? Teaching. Is it something that you are discovering later in life? Tell me, tell Real me. Real late, <laughs> seventy-six. That late. <laughs> <laughs> but it is amazing. Why did we? Why did somebody years and years ago write, "Amazing Grace"? How sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you telling me that that you would have gotten saved every week when you were growing up? Is that kind of? Of course we did. Yeah. So when you grew I up, you I got saved I, every I week. I thought I needed to. I she probably that. did. I in needed a way. it. But I, I I did it. You know. Okay. I mean, I, everything you did. He thought, you know what was so sad about it is I think people thought that every time that they failed, that when they got saved, then there was a, the rules and the regulations of Christianity, and, and you climb the ladder and you try to do the best you could, but then you would fail and you'd fall, and then you would feel like you'd drop to the, to the bottom again, and you'd have to start over again. But I have read a book. Yeah. <laughs> that I have just been bawling over the last few days. We should have read a book and found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. <laughs> been here all along <laughs> yeah, really. for, for thousands of years. 
Um, but sometimes it takes someone to, to speak it in just a way impart, impart and it. impart it. And, you know, Joseph Prince has just been a, an amazing, an amazing teacher of grace. Tullian Chibijan has written a book called One Way Love that brings so much. It's like when freedom comes and grace comes and you receive all that Jesus did. He did it all. It's finished. It's done. That it makes you want to do more. <laughs> and I love that about and, and how you describe that and how you and how you talk about it. And what makes me so thrilled is tonight that no matter where you are watching, anywhere on this planet called Earth, God has made a way for you to hear and for you to listen, to be freed in your spirit, free in your mind, free in your soul to do what God's called you to do. And that's what Trinity Broadcasting, and I love you. I love you. I love you for sticking it out, for taking one step at a time with Papa. And you guys years, have Lord. for 40 years, I'm sorry, 41 year happy birthday to you. How about 56 years? We were 56 married. you were married. At 41 years, you had just taken one step, one, one faithful step. And as you did that, God in his all, his greatness and faithfulness has made a way that all of us can hear the message of grace. And I think that TBN was raised up for nights like this. Yes. Because we're not, we're not just going to talk about some religion. Yeah. Jesus was trying to tell us that it was the end of religion. Christianity okay? took and it all away. Christianity <laughs> somehow uh, you know, got mistaken with just the very awesome knowledge of that Jesus, while we were yet sinners, died for us. That's right. And that's, I think, what tonight's program is about. Let me just, let me just first of all... Uh, Tolian Chavijan. Uh, well and, done. And thank you. Uh, well make Tolian welcome to the Praise yeah. of the Lord program. His new book, One Way Love. Um, let's do this. Let's, let's explain to everybody that this book is kind of a manifesto. Yeah. This is a bit of a 91st yeah. thesis mm. of today's generation Put your and you're, hammer and nail. you're you're really not you're not messing around and I think that what you're trying to do with this book is you're trying to impart something mm. that's super important take the first few minutes now and just kind of share with us why this book and this subject mm. is the difference between maybe life and death and a lot of people yeah I mean as has already been mentioned I mean grace grace is our only hope yeah. it's our lifeline and all too often it gets lost in sort of this moralistic, do more, try harder religiosity that all too often we find in churches, we find behind pulpits. I mean, I've talked to lots of people both inside and outside the church who, for whatever reason, are disenchanted with church, disenchanted with Christianity, because they've come to believe that Christianity is all about performing for God, doing for God, living for God, when in fact the focus and the foundation of the Christian faith has been lost, which is not living for God, which is our response yeah. to God's work for us, but it's this glorious, powerful reality that God and Jesus has lived for us. Wow. And there's a huge difference between believing that my uh, standing with God, God's approval of me, God's acceptance of me, God's love for me is dependent on me and what I do wow. rather than what Jesus has already done for me. So the focus of the Christian faith is not the life of the Christian, it's Jesus. Yeah. And as I often tell people when you think about the story of uh, Peter being summoned by Jesus to join him walking on the water. Yep. They see Jesus coming from a distance. They think he's a ghost at first, and then they realize it's him, and Jesus says, come join me on the water. Peter's never gotten out of the... I mean, he's never walked on water before. Um, and so in faith, he gets out and starts walking on the water, and he's doing just fine <laughs> until he takes his eyes off of Jesus and looks down to see how he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then he begins to sink. And I think lots of Christians are sinking because they are not fixing their eyes on Jesus and what he's done, yeah. but rather what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, and so I think um, 
the great Presbyterian minister James Montgomery Boyce once said that Romans 8.1, that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, is not just the thesis of Romans 8, it's not just the thesis of Romans as a whole, but it's the thesis of the Bible. Yeah. Um, this idea that if you are a Christian, you live your life under a banner that reads, it is finished, yeah. wow. paid in full. Um, and I think that's oftentimes lost in our desire to live right and do right, which, by the way, if you take God's law seriously, where Jesus says, be perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect, it should crush you and break you to the point where you go, my only hope yeah. is Jesus and what he's done, because even when I think I'm doing a good job, wow. I'm failing. I remember telling someone, well, I was speaking at a large conference, and, and I said, one of the comments I made was, because Jesus succeeded for you, you're free to fail. And some guy comes up to me afterwards, and he said, you just encouraged 3,000 people to fail. And I said, I got, I got two things to say. Number one, these people were all failing just fine before I said a word. <laughs> wow. um, and number two, I didn't encourage failure. Failure is not a virtue, but failure is a fact. And acknowledging failure is most definitely a virtue. Wow. And the glorious good news of the gospel is that when we fail, God loves us still because of what Jesus has done. Our approval, our acceptance before God is never in question, ever. It's a done deal. Um, and that right there doesn't encourage laziness mm -hmm. to me. It doesn't make me apathetic toward life. Yeah. It actually makes me want to love others the way God has loved me. It makes wow. me want to serve others the way God has served me. And so I think sometimes people go, you can't preach this free grace stuff too much because it will cause people to be apathetic about the way they live or be overly tolerant of sin in their lives and all of that stuff as if grace is going to get in the way of following God. Yeah. Um, and I said, when a heart has been genuinely gripped by grace... Something beautiful happens. It's called self-forgetfulness. Wow. Now you're not thinking wow. about me and what I need to do. You're thinking about Jesus and what he's done, which yes. then overflows into a life of service to our neighbor. Um, so that now I can, I can have a relationship with you, knowing that everything I need in Christ I already possess. I can now spend the rest of my life giving to you without needing anything from you um, <laughs> because everything I need I have yeah. and that is absolute freedom because bondage is I my relationship with you is based on this idea that I need to get something from you mm -hmm. in order to feel like I matter in order to in order to get worth and value and significance I need to extract something from you and so now the pressure is on for me to manipulate you um, you know, use you, that sort of thing. And when you go, everything I need in Christ I have, therefore I can give you everything without needing you to give me anything. That's wow. huge. That's huge. huge. You are listening to Tolian Trevijan, his new book, One Way Love, uh, just out. Uh, we got introduced to it. Uh, Lori read it. She's been crying for about a week <laughs> because of, of how beautiful it is. You've got to do one thing for me. Uh, give me a kind of a double bicep shot here. Kind of do it. Just... just <laughs> Because I want you to explain your, your, oh, my, my, your tattoos. My tattoos, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I've got one going down the, my forearm over here to telestai. It's simply Greek mm -hmm. for it is finished. Right. Uh, this is a Latin abbreviation, an old Latin abbreviation for the word of the Lord abides forever. Okay. And then Martin Luther, my favorite theological phrase, a phrase that changed my life in college, was a phrase coined by uh, the great reformer Martin Luther, simul justus et peccator, which means simultaneously justified and sinner. Wow. So I have justus on my right arm, which means justified, and peccator on my left bicep, which means sinner. So the goal was, and I've got a couple more on my shoulders, but um, the goal <laughs> was that if something ever happened to my voice, I could stand up shirtless on Sunday morning <laughs> and the gospel would still go forth. That was the goal. <laughs> Not to mention, to be quite honest with you, every morning I wake up, I have to be reminded that it is finished. Yeah. Wow. I have to be reminded yeah. because uh, we forget. I mean, you know, I say this to people all the time. We have to preach the gospel to ourselves yeah. every day because we forget it every day. You mentioned uh, just a minute ago that there are some people who say, wait a second, 
you can't teach grace too hard. Yeah. Uh, grace, but. Yeah, grace butts but. and breaks, I but, call it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in your book, you also uh, talk about, well, st start there. So right. just kind of, what do you say to the person that says, wait a second. Grease you know, grace, the, yeah. grace. The, 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 you know, you, you talk about it in your book by saying, those people actually have low regard for the law. That's right. Kind of jump into that because I thought that was Yeah, I, one of the things I addressed because that is a common objection to those like me who are just militant in their preaching of God's grace. And extending your and arms extending, out. Yeah, militant <laughs> about. Um, but so one of the things that I say on a regular basis and I talk about it at length in the book is the, the problem in the church today is not cheap grace. The problem in the church today is cheap law. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when we reduce God's requirements uh, to something smaller than the perfect righteousness of Jesus, we cheapen God's law and be perfect as your Father in Heaven is perfect now gets cheapened into just do your best. Well, I can deceive myself every day into thinking I'm doing my best and the moment I start believing that I'm pulling it off, grace becomes much less amazing to me because wow. now I'm, I'm actually doing it myself. And so you need the heaviness of God's law constantly telling you, be perfect. I mean, Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, it's a great, great place to go in the Sermon on the Mount where he says, you've heard it said that, you know, uh, if, you, if you don't kill anyone, you're doing fine. But I say if you've ever been angry for a second, um, you're just as guilty before God as the one who kills someone. Or you've heard it said, don't commit adultery and you'll be doing fine. But if you've ever had a lustful thought for a split second, you're just as guilty as the adulterer in yeah. God's court. And, so, and then he culminates that whole section by saying, therefore, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And his whole goal in doing that was to level the playing field and to crush people in such a way that they would come to the realization, my only hope is Jesus yeah. and wow. what he does on behalf yeah. of sinners. Wow. So, and he says, I mean, Jesus says, I have not come to abolish the law. I've come to fulfill it. So Jesus fulfilled, I mean, Jesus fulfilled all of God's holy conditions so that our relationship to God could be wholly unconditional. Yeah. So you're making the reverse point. Mm -hmm. Someone that thinks there can be too much grace has a low regard for exactly the law. That's exactly right. That's, yep, that's exactly right. And that is, I think, a super important point here. Um, this idea that we have cheapened the law into something we can do. Wow. And once we cheapen God's requirements into something we can do, then Jesus becomes that much less relevant and necessary for us. But once the law, once the standard of God's law is raised so high that even the best of us look at it and go, I, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't pull it off. Um, then we end up saying things like, you know, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Jesus paid it all. Thank God this whole thing is riding on the strong shoulders of another. It's my only hope. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him, talk about uh, when people get saved, it's just supposed to take you deeper. Yeah, I, well, I grew up going to church, right. and when I heard the word gospel, yeah. I thought that was what people outside the church needed. Right. So the gospel for me was synonymous with evangelism. Okay. Um, I mean, it was, this, is, this is what non-Christians need. But then once God saves you, he moves you beyond the gospel into something else. But when you read the Bible more carefully, what you discover is that once God saves you, he doesn't then move you beyond the gospel. He moves you more deeply into the gospel. Mm -hmm. That the gospel is not just the ABCs of the Christian faith. It's the A to Z of the Christian wow. faith. And that the gospel doesn't just ignite the Christian life, but it fuels the Christian life. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because we're so forgetful and we start believing our own press, we need to be constantly hearing it is finished. Yeah. We never, I don't care if you've been a Christian for five minutes or 50 years, you never, ever, ever outgrow your need to hear it is finished. Yeah. Ever. Or you're the righteousness of God. That's and right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And five minutes, 50 years, or 70 years. Hmm. Yeah, that's the truth. You know what? I don't know if we made it known to the people that may have never seen 
Tully and Virginie before, that you are Billy Graham's grandson. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. The Billy Graham. Yep. His mother is Gigi. Yep. Wilson. Yeah. Covidian. Yeah. Wilson. Yeah. And you are Billy's grandson. I what am. does your grandfather think of this? I'm I'm sure he thinks it's wonderful. Well, he's of course ecstatic in part because I was uh, a terribly rebellious teenager. Oh, do uh, tell. Oh, yes, do tell. I, I love to tell the story. I think actually I think it gives some historical context into why I'm so passionate yeah. about this message. Why were we preachers kids so rebellious? Yeah, and I, don't, I know. Well, Speak I was I, listen, did you I get thrown out of Bible school? Oh, I didn't have <laughs> I did. He got thrown out of the house. Uh, but I I mean I uh it was, for me it was worse. It wasn't just that I had a preacher in the family. I mean my granddad's the preacher. My dad was a psychologist. So you yeah, can imagine <laughs> the combination of being the grandson of a preacher and the son of a psychologist, you're doomed to fail. How did that um, make you feel? Yeah. <laughs> I know. What are you really feeling, son? Like, um, so I, um, yeah, I, I'm born into a Christian home where God gave me this unbelievable heritage. Yeah, wow. Middle of seven children. Uh, the flavor of Christianity expressed in my home growing up was not oppressive or legalistic. Mm -hmm. It was warm and hospitable mm -hmm. and inviting. We were taught at a young age take God seriously, never take yourself too seriously. So uh, our, the, the Chivijan love language is sarcasm. Um, <laughs> oh, welcome you know, we to my world. To, we, we continue to build each other up by tearing each other down. Um, <laughs> lots of fun, lots of camaraderie. But for whatever reason, maybe it's because I was a middle child, but I couldn't really figure out where I fit inside my family. Mm -hmm. And so when you're young and you're desperate to belong, uh, and you don't know where you belong inside the home, you make some pretty foolish decisions about how you can decide where to belong outside the home. So at a young age, I started hanging out with people I shouldn't have been hanging out with and doing things I shouldn't have been doing, and all of that culminated at the ripe young age of 16 when my parents said, we love you, but if you're going to continue living this way, you can't live this way under our roof. And so they wow. literally kicked me out of the house. They had tried everything, private school, public school, counseling, you name it. Uh, kicked me out of the house. I, I was actually escorted off of our property by the police. Um, and I dropped out of high school. And I thought that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. No, no teachers breathing down my neck. No parents, you know, looking over my shoulder. I was finally free um, to pursue all the things I thought would make me happy. And the Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. But when that season comes to an end, you're left with a gaping hole in your soul that only God is big enough to fill. And that season came to an end for me at 21. And it wasn't one particular event or one particular crisis. It was just this culminating sense of there's got to be more to life than what I'm experiencing. There's got to be more to who I am than what this world is telling me. And the hound of heaven tracked me down wow. and magnificently defeated me and raised me from death to life. I haven't been the same since. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> something happened to me shortly after I became a Christian that I think happens to lots of people shortly after they become Christians. Um, and that is, I started to get better. It's a terrible thing when you start wow. to get better. And what I mean by that is, uh, you actually stop doing some bad things and you start doing some good things, and that part alone is good. Um, but you actually start growing, at least in your own heart and mind, you start growing out of desperation and the moment you begin thinking you're not as desperate as you used to be, mm -hmm. grace ceases to be amazing to you. Mm -hmm. And so I became a moralist, mm -hmm. really. I mean, the focus, it, the, what happened to me was six months, a year after God saved me, um, I mean, the focus stopped being Jesus and what he had done, and it started becoming all about me and what I need to do. Wow. And uh, that went on for a number of years, and I finally just crashed and burned. 2000 and 8, 2009 was a crash and burn year for me. And it was like I was converted all over again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally came to the end of myself. I have a friend named John Zoll who says that God's office is at the end of our rope. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> that grace always flows downhill. And I remember during that season in my life coming to the end of myself in such a way that the only way out was up. And, um, and it, again, it wasn't one particular crisis or one particular event. It was just this, I was burning out fast because I was running on my own steam. Mm -hmm. um, and God's grace became so real to me during that period of time in my life. 
Um, and that is literally when I sensed God saying, this is the message I want you to preach until the day you die. Mm. Wow. Don't, you don't, you've got, I'm putting one bullet in your gun. Mm. One bullet in your gun. You're going to say it every week, every time you open, every, with every tweet, every blog post, every book, every comment, every interview, every sermon, you've got one thing to say. Wow. Um, and so that's what I've been doing. You know, since the then. TVN was founded for the very purpose of guys like yourself looking into your camera. Mm. There could be some people that were in the same place you were in 2009 mm. that are just thinking that they're there at the end of the rope, mm. even though they've been a Christian. Grace is such a beautiful thing, mm. but it may not have been presented. Somebody mm. might be thinking, those people on the couch, they've got their act together, all these folks here in Southern California, yeah. or Southern Cal South Florida here. Uh, I live in Southern Cal, sorry. Uh, and uh, that, that they all are suited up and they look like all the, nobody has any problems in this studio. Uh, but what if you could present the gospel in a way that you know changed mm. your life? Yeah. Why don't you look into your camera and do that? Yeah, I would say that God loves Come on, bad, man. weak, <laughs> people because bad and weak people are all that there are. Wow. Um, and that you never ever, you, it, it's impossible to out -sin the coverage of God's forgiveness. It's impossible. That there is absolutely nothing we can do to separate ourselves from God's love Beautiful. for us in Christ Jesus. I mean, I think I have to go back all the time, especially when I fail, especially when I fail, which is regularly. Um, daily, almost moment by moment, I have to always go back to Romans 8. Always go back to Romans 8 and be reminded by God himself through the Apostle Paul that there is nothing that can separate me from God's love. That God's love for me is not dependent on what I do, but it's ultimately dependent on what Jesus has done. That God doesn't love me more when I'm doing well and he doesn't love me less when I'm not doing well that God's love for us is constant, it's Beautiful. fixed, and you're in forever. And so that alone gives you, it gives me, um, just the capacity to process failure and bad seasons in life and brokenness when we know that our standing with God is forever fixed, forever fixed because of what Jesus has done, that this whole thing, is riding on him and thankfully that's true because if it's riding on you or if it's riding on me we're all in big trouble so I God's grace is real it's the most real reality in the universe it's the only thing that saves me on a daily basis and like I said if you are a Christian you live your life under a banner that reads it is finished Beautiful. And that's what you need to know more than anything. Pray for him. In I case would. somebody doesn't know how to yeah. even accept Christ, just yeah. they could be I'd watching in a prison. They, you know, they yeah. could be watching anywhere around the world. Just help yeah. them. I'd help love them. to. Let's pray. God, thank you for your amazing grace. We are ill-deserving, train-wrecked sinners. Wow. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That while we were at our worst. You gave us your best. And that's so difficult to believe. It's so, it's impossible to believe unless you grant us belief. You, unless Lord. you give us faith. It's impossible to believe. But I pray that you would open our eyes and soften our hearts and help us to see Jesus for who he is and for what he's done for us. I, I pray that you would massage the good news of the gospel down you, deep into our bones and help us to believe it. We pray uh, like the father of this sick girl, we believe but help thou our unbelief. Yeah. And so I pray, oh God, that by your spirit you would be even right now overpowering unbelief, that you would be granting belief in the radicality of your amazing grace in the outrageousness of your mercy. And I pray that you would help all of us, those watching by television, me, I pray that you would help all of us to know that because Jesus has done what he's done for sinners, we can be set free.
we can be liberated Thank from the Lord. pressure to generate our own worth and our own value and our own significance by what we do because Jesus has paid it all and given it all to us for free. So help us to believe it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. I, one thing that Matt and I have both experienced is that I was, I was raised in church. And um, I love when you point out that Paul, at the end of his life, he said, I am the chief of sinners. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for the, the people who love God and try and, and do and, and are exhausted mm -hmm. by trying so hard. When you talk about that, this is a book for them, the, the, the exhausted. And... Um, Grace frustrates people that think they're good, you know, and, and I love how you talk about when Jesus, when the Pharisees were talking to Jesus, he wasn't condemning them for the things they did right, mm. but because they demeaned the people mm. that didn't live up mm -hmm. to their, to standards. their standards, yeah. you know, and, and that's where the, the, the value of the law comes from. Mm that Jesus knows our hearts. Mm. And, you know, there's, there's not a day that goes by that we're not Jesus, mm. you know, <laughs> that mm. we don't sin, that we don't think, you know, if thoughts could kill, you'd be dead, you know. Mm. It, you know, that there is, God knows our hearts. Mm. But the people who, one time I was in such a desperate, such a desperate area or, or a time in our life, that we just needed God to do a miracle for us. And I remember saying, God, if you would just, if you'd just do something right now, and, and we just didn't have to try so hard. Mm. Look at all that we could be doing for you, because I think out of the heart of everything I do for you, I'm going to try to do everything right for you and to give you glory for it. But look at all that we could be doing if you'd just help us and give us this miracle right now. And it was like God clubbed me upside the head with the most beautiful two-by-four I'd ever received. And I said, that is the most arrogant thing I have ever heard anybody say. And I said it. It came out of me. Look at all that I could be doing for you if you would just do a miracle for me. And Jesus spoke to me so clearly, don't you ever think it's anything that you do for me. Amen. It's all what I've done for yeah. you. Amen. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And, and I, and I'm I wanna... telling you, this book will change your life. Please get this book. I have, I have ordered many of them, and uh, I'm sending them to everybody I know. So, Javen, you're getting one in the mail. Here soon, your final, final you thoughts. One. I, I, I want to I wanna kind of get your, your final thoughts. I want to give you one second, though, because just like she had a moment, I was getting ready to get on an airplane and fly into Baghdad, you know, I mean, Baghdad. Remember the war there? Okay. Yeah. This is 2004. Okay. Active combat still going on, and my dad had invited me, so I just went. I didn't pray about it myself. You know, like, <laughs> dad had you know it's, a, it's, a, it's a little dangerous there, and I probably should have prayed about it. Hmm. And I was getting ready to, to go downstairs in the, in, uh, there in Maman, Jordan, and all of a sudden fear gripped me. Hmm. Like, I'm going into a war zone. I've got a young wife, two little kids. What the heck, hmm. you know? And, and I... I don't know why I all of a sudden did this, but I started questioning, and I said, have I been good enough mm. for God to protect me while I'm in a literal war zone, mm -hmm. okay, with tanks and guns and the whole nine? So I questioned. Mm. I was at that point that maybe you were, at, you know, have I been good enough? Mm. And the Lord freed me that morning by mm. speaking to me and saying, it'll never be what... It'll never be about whether you, what you have done or what you have not done, but what I did. Mm. And I went to Baghdad, enjoyed my trip, never thought about my safety, and the idea that grace sustained me, 
I didn't even know what to call it back then. Mm -hmm. Now that I've read your book mm -hmm. and <laughs> been taught by <laughs> Joseph Prince and, and Creflo Dollar and, mm -hmm. and, and all of the teaching that's coming out, I realize grace mm -hmm. set me free and from fear mm -hmm. of going into a yeah. war zone mm -hmm. and trying to help those believers in that air part of the world. <laughs> So with that, grace made us forget about ourselves mm. and go and do what God's called us to do. Yeah. It totally made us stop yeah. thinking about ourselves. And I think, you know, one, just sort of piggybacking on that, I think lots of people inside the church today think that Christian growth means I'm getting stronger and stronger and more and more competent every day. When when you read the Bible, what you discover is that Christian growth is not, I'm getting stronger and stronger and more and more competent every day. It's, I'm becoming increasingly aware of how weak and incompetent <laughs> yes. I am and how, how strong and me. competent Jesus continues yes. to be for me. Yes. Wow. So this, he's the hero of the story. Yes, yeah. The whole thing is about him yes, is. and what he's done. <laughs> it's our only hope. Wow. And I'm... We need, a, we need a new reformation. Yes, yeah. we do. And this is the message that launched the first reformation yeah. back in the 1500s, early 1500s, and it desperately needs to be rediscovered by the church. Wow. Go you tell him. I could listen to you forever. <laughs> and those that want to, he is the senior pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church right here in Coral Ridge. Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah. Fort Lauderdale, yeah. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, right here. So... Every Sunday, every Wednesday night, every Thursday mm -hmm. night, every Friday night, you're there. And they can listen online. Oh, uh, there, we live stream, Why? so they can find us online if they don't you're live right. here. But Tolian Chavigian has been our guest. His book is Many One Way books. Love, Amazing. and he's written a lot of books, but apparently, I think the quote of the night is, nothing else you can say. You're a broken record. Mm. It's grace. Mm. The end of religion is on us. Amen. Jesus Amen. came to declare the end of religion. That's right. And, and ultimately, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That is the gospel. That the is good the good news. news of the gospel. <laughs> and it's being proclaimed. And I like the last line of your book. Uh, the very last thing you say is, it is finished. It is finished. And it really is done. <laughs> yes. Love Amen. it. Amen. Thank you, brother. Jaden, <laughs> sing for us. Come on, song says. Sometimes it gets hard to know where to start You're all alone Keep pushing and trying to test and try Gotta be strong, yeah I don't know if I can have the dreams I've seen But I know it will happen if I just believe Hoping and praying Believing things will change All right, let's sing it together Say, oh, oh Keeping the faith you got it? Say with me. Oh, oh, oh. Got to keep the faith. Y'all can move a little bit. Let's go. Say, oh, oh, oh. Keep in the faith. Come on, sing it now. Oh, oh, oh. Got to keep the faith. See, I know you've been down for quite some time. Seems like there's nothing that will ease your mind. But you got to be strong even though you don't know how things will end. But in time, things will work out for you, too. Hold on and pray just like you should. Things will be fine. It just takes time. But you're going to be all right. Say, oh, oh, oh. Keep it I need my praises. Help me out. Say, oh, oh, I got to keep it. A little louder. Say, oh. Come on. Hey, one of these days you'll see, and it won't be very long. Tell somebody, you're going to look for me, and I'll be a long time gone. Hanging out with Jesus, talk about how it all went down, how he changed my life completely. God can turn it around, 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 late in the midnight hour, say, around, 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 around,
y'all can sing a lot of sing. Oh, 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 hey, I gotta keep it. Look at your neighbor. Say, oh, tell him, oh, I'm keeping wherever you are today. Say, Give him a shout of praise in the house today. Hallelujah. Yay. Pastor Javen. Come on now. He, brand new album by Javen, Worship in the Now. That is his latest album. You can go to Amazon, wherever you want to go to get his music, to iTunes. Maybe you can And uh, Javen, great job. Pastor awesome. Javen. He is... Uh, He is the pastor of Worship in the Now right here in Southern California. Uh, and, Southern, and Southern Florida. What did I say? Southern California? California. I live in Southern California. I apologize. Have a seat. We're going to welcome our next uh, wonderful guest. I'm going to call him Pastor G because he's a dear friend of mine. Give me your hand. I love you, my yeah, brother. We Thank you. Love Thank you. Uh, pastor Guillermo Maldonado. And uh, you have. Uh, been listening to Grace. Mama, and I want you to say what you told me during the song. I I want you to just, because I want you to tell that real quick. Um, Forty years ago, when TBN started, I went through the most horrible experience that those of you that say you've gone through depression, there is no hell like it. You know what I'm talking about. It is it is a living hell. And I'll just tell you that at one point, I got to the place where, where we live in Southern California. I um, was thinking, and it got so, so, so bad, that um, I could just start walking toward the ocean. And we just keep walking. And nobody would ever know whether I just drowned or really just took my life. That's how bad it got when I was going through depression. It was horrible. And those of you that are there, I, I can tell you that God can deliver you. Yes. He, de- he can yes. deliver you. Yes. And um, there's, the story is way too long to tell. But uh, I lost my joy, lost my tears, couldn't cry, couldn't take care of my babies. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't laugh. And God, through a miracle vision, gave me one night in the middle of the night. I saw Jesus in Israel sitting by the Sea of Galilee. You've seen my tape, maybe some of you. And he was laughing, and I got my joy back. I woke up in the middle of the night laughing. And Paul said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? (laughs) But... I couldn't, I couldn't get my tears back. Nothing made, nothing touched my heart. And it was just the devil, just, he just rips you of your joy and your tears and your life. And one night I was watching TBN <laughs> and precious little Tammy Baker was playing on the organ. She couldn't play very well and she couldn't sing very well. <laughs> but that's not. But there she was singing, and she was singing, Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. And I started bawling. And I didn't realize it until we started talking about grace, that it was grace, grace, what God had done, what Jesus had done for us, that healed me and brought my joy and my tears back yeah. in that healing. So, Pastor G, this is a big subject. It's a complex subject, but at the same time, simple. You know, yes, it, is. it is. It is. Jesus was declaring that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. So it's simple and it's complex at the same time. You've heard so far 
pick up the story and 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 let's talk about this amazing thank grace. Thank you, Matt. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Hello. Thank you, Janet. What a joy. It's an honor and privilege to be here. Um, you know, Matt. Every time you have seen in the body of Christ that God is restoring a truth, yes. uh, you will see the extremes. You will see those people that God gave them the revelation, and those people that took the extreme. And in every true every truth of God push to an extreme, become a bondage. Yep. So I have seen the people that suffer legalism yep. run into grace, and this is what happened. They went to the extreme because they were so hurt for legalism. And the other side is that, you know, I have grace now. I can do whatever I want. And I think we have to bring the balance we all agree Jesus Christ paid it on the, on the cross. It's finished, it's done. Nothing we can add it. If we add anything, we'd be, you know, something else. So, and we understand, and we have to keep the balance in this. Okay, we understand we rest on the cross. We rest on what he did. And from that position, we work. We do whatever we need to do. Now, not to earn anything. He already did it. And this is what I have seen in extremism and part of grace in some areas, some people teaching. Uh, for example, they remove the priesthood of the believer. What, what does that mean? Okay, remember what the Bible says that presents spiritual sacrifice to God. So prayer, worship, giving, all the, all the activities of sacrifice to God, not to earn anything, because we are priests in the house of God. We must bring it to the Lord. And we have, there's so many people that have removed, for example, I got people that said to me, well, I don't have to pray. I don't have to fast. I don't have to do anything. Jesus did it all. And I say, wait a minute. John, Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, he says, I die daily. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, die daily? But if you're on the grave, and then he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. And then he goes, but I labor. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. And then you said, if you're on grace, what, what do you mean laboring? And that's what he was talking about, the sacrifice that we need to bring, not to earn anything, and we're going to do it because we are believers. We are already resting. From that resting place is what we minister to God. Not to be better, not to earn anything, and because we are saved, we own grace, in that place of rest, we're going to seek God. So this is the other extreme I have seen. I have seen people ministering grace without the supernatural. If I give you the definition of grace is, grace, if you go to the Greek, by the way, the Greek is not the original uh, language of the Bible, it's Hebrew. Okay, if you go to grace, grace is unmerited favor. That's a regular, normal dictionary definition, unmerited favor. But if we go to the scripture, we will see that grace is the supernatural power of God to be what you cannot be in your own ability. Yeah. And to do what you cannot do in your own ability. In other words, is a, the power of God, you know, taking us to be what we cannot do in our own ability. Wow. So that's why we can't keep anything in our own ability. Mm -hmm. And that's why legalism has destroyed so many people. And at the same time, the, this extreme grace has destroyed many people thinking, I don't have to do anything. And what you do is, you, you try to do something, and you take away so many people and their relationship with God. So this is what I see. I see great, grace is supernatural. It's a supernatural power of God. So we cannot remove. I can't change by myself. And that's why you see many times the preaching of self-help. I mean, how can I preach self-help gospel? If I preach that kind of gospel, I'm removing Jesus. Yeah, wow. Yeah. How, how, I cannot change by myself. Yeah. It's the supernatural grace of God yeah. working in me and doing in me what I cannot do in my own ability. But that doesn't take away the fact I want to pray. I want to fast. I want to see God not to earn anything. And this generation is looking for a shortcut to power. This generation wants a shortcut to power. They want success without sacrifice. In other words, I want the best education, I want the best college, but you don't want to study. Hey, you need to study. So why Paul says, while I'm in rest, I am what I am by the grace of God, but I labor. 
Labor for what? From where? Not to earn, but labor from a place of resting on what Jesus has done. But don't take it away because people rest for some people. Rest meaning don't do anything. Hmm. <laughs> That's not rest in the scripture. Rest is to say, I trust the work of Jesus. I believe that it's finished. I believe that power in me will work in what I cannot do in my own ability. Therefore, I can pray for the sick. I can heal the sick. I can change not in my own help, but in the power of grace. So the problem that I have and the scripture has with some people that believe in those grace and they said, well, where is the power? Because that's what the Bible says, where sin abounds, what is going to happen? Oh, of course, if you see sin, uh, so, so why so many people is taking license to sin, saying, well, I'm in grace, I can do whatever I want. Wait a minute, that's not what the scripture says. We have to take the balance, to take the people, you have a priesthood, you need to minister, praise, worship, that's what the Bible says, Hebrew 13, 5, bring in sacrifice to praise to God, to be better. To earn salvation, to earn my healing? No, because I am a priest resting on his power, resting in what Jesus did on the cross, and receive what he did. Wow. Okay, two things. First, you have amazing hair. Okay, that's the first thing, okay? Okay, amazing hair, beautiful hair. Okay. Amazing church. Okay, amazing church. Uh, where Second thing, okay, where, where, where is your church in case somebody... Miami, Florida. Okay. 141 Southwest, Southwest of Miami. Okay, look for the biggest building in that part of town. <laughs> that is it. It seats thousands and thousands of people. And if you want... Well, look, also, your program airs right here on TBN right. on Sundays and what other day? Wednesday, Wednesday. 8 p.m. And, and you Tuesday, want some more time, PM, yes. right? Well, there's the boss right there. So <laughs> the, the pink-haired <laughs> lady right here. And <laughs> by the way, you have lovely hair, too. <laughs> <laughs> when have you seen it? <laughs> <laughs> you so have you. lovely hair, Mom. Thank you. And lovely eyelashes. Thank you. And lovely poofy lips. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Great hair, and you also minister in, you, you have a desire to teach us all how to be more equipped. You have seminars, you have training, your, your program uh, seems to be trying to shake all Christians and saying the supernatural power of God is in you, display it. How do we get a 10-minute course here in yes. the supernatural? Okay, going into this, Matt, going, following the grace side. Yeah. Okay, I told you that grace is supernatural. So you can't discard it and say it's natural. It's supernatural. Supernatural to be transformed. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 3.18, and we are being transformed from glory to glory. Okay. So it's the power got to be transformed okay. and to live a holy life. So we can't do it in our own ability. We understand. And third is the supernatural God, a power of God, to do what we cannot do in our ability. So there's so many things right now, Matt, that we have seen, we've seen in the world today, in many areas, health, finances, that we must have the supernatural. And now the supernatural in church is something uh, the people have accustomed to live without it. In other words, I can grow my church with entertainment. Hmm. I can church, I can change the people with self-help gospel. I can tell them to, change, to confess that they're good people, and they're going to change. So the power of God is to overcome sin. The power of God is to bring that power. There's so much need right now that without the supernatural, it would be impossible to meet the needs of men. It would be impossible. I have heard, and, and did you know that 10% of this country, 10% of those people, they're in depression. 25. See, increase it. 25. Increase it because yeah. the last time I went one year ago, it was 10%. 20. So you can't, when you're dealing with super, when you're dealing with spirit, you can go with natural things. You need the supernatural. Yeah. There's a need of the supernatural. Yeah. When you go with things that people come to you and tell you, listen, I got 10 days to live. What are you going to tell them? Confess through scriptures? You must demonstrate and bring the power of God. Yeah. My mission... My assignment is to bring the supernatural.
Matt, I have been in 60 countries. Lori and Jan, I've been in 60 countries. I have trained thousands and thousands of people, young, adults, all kinds of people. And they do the miracles that I do because we created another thing in America and is to, have, to be a celebrity. In other words, you're the only one, no one else. You're the holy one. Well, the scripture says these signs shall follow those who believe. Wow. Right. wow. You know, we can do it. All you can do it. If you're watching right now, you can do it. Any believer. One of the nurses, I got one nurse. She got a hold of my book, How to Walk in the Supernatural. She read the book, and she has the, those patients where the doctor said, well, you're going to die. You've got 10 days to live. You're going to die. They put them in a special room. This lady read my book, and she started saying, well, let me apply what I read in the book, How to Walk in the Supernatural. She prayed for those people, and they brought a little baby, and the baby was di- dead, and she said, well, let me apply it. Let me speak life into this baby. That nurse, she was not a bishop. She was not a pastor. She was a regular believer. Pray for that little boy, and the little boy came back to life. And then they had another case. There was a mom that died trying to give birth, and she died, brought him into her. Now, all the hospitals are all the hospitals saying to her, well, send those people to the, the miracle lady. Yeah. Wow. Now, she's praying. Three people, have ra- she has raised three people from the dead. Wow. Reading the book. What I'm saying is it's not just theory, but also something. Can I tell you something? What's the name of that book? How to Walk in the Supernatural. Wow. Okay. So how to walk. You know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is you ask me, tell the people. The supernatural is for every believer. Okay. You cannot define God outside of being supernatural. God is supernatural. From Genesis to Revelation, you see supernatural things. But now we re- reduce God to be a natural God. In other words, I mean, when you're saying God is natural, how can a miracle is defined when God breaks the law of nature? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't do, there's some things beyond our reach. There's something that we can't change. We need the supernatural. Yeah. And let me tell you, there's a generation that is tired of the same old, same old. Yes. They want power. Yeah. They want the power of God. They want the presence of God. We have practiced the presence for so long. We have practiced the presence, the absence of the presence for so long that we don't miss it in church anymore. In other words, we come to church and you ask the people, how was the service? I was nice. What supernatural thing happened? If nothing supernatural happened, God wasn't in it. Why? Because if they never speak in tongues, they never hear the sick, they never... He, one of these Sundays, I did the call for the lost. The Spirit of God took me over, and it took me 45 minutes. 678 people came into the altar, weeping, repenting of their sin. And what are you saying? Can I do that naturally? No. But was the Spirit of God. So when we ask, how was the service? And then you say, well, it was good. Meaning what? <laughs> and we used to, uh, we practice so much the absence of the power and the wow. presence that nothing is happening, that we don't miss it. In other words, God is not in it. And I believe if God is supernatural, if grace is supernatural, we must see the demonstration of the living God in the now. My young people, Lori, they go to the malls, they go to the, to, the, to, to the colleges and universities and preach and, and the streets, people falling out under the power. I mean, this is normal. I mean, you're talking about, yeah, and the Latinos, I see it in Asia. Yeah. And you say, yeah, Europe, I see it in Europe. You see people in Spain, all the young people coming out. There's one of my churches in, in Dallas. They went out for three hours and they won 650 people for Jesus. Wow. In three hours. And it wasn't with trucks. It was with the power of God. It was with the power of God. So there's people there seeing, well, we're getting into places, into times. We're living in a time that we must have the power. We must have the power. I was in, Iran, in, in Turkey, and I got 70 pastors from Iran. And they said to me, you come from America. I said, yes, you must have power. Otherwise, we're going to kill you. I said, what do you mean? He said, in, in Iran, when you preach about Jesus, those people will kill you unless you tell them something that God said. You know, you prophesy, you talk to them, you pray for them. I trained a couple. They went back to Iran, and being in Iran, somebody died in the family. They were Muslim people. And they said, when we went to pray, that person died. He was in the hospital. He said, I did what you said. Raise the dead. I prayed for the man, came back to life. The whole family got saved. That's what I'm talking about. 
And you know, Matt, there's something, there is something I like to, to do. I, the gospel is simple, yes. practical, yes. and powerful. Yes. There's not too much about things. Is it supernatural? We need it now. We need it today. There's so many people that believe in the historical God. Mm-hmm. I know God healed people. I know God was good. I know God did this. But what about now? Mm-hmm. Can you tell this generation, yes, my mom spoke in tongues. You need to tell them now. Be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Be filled now. We're filled with power. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not a God of the past, but God of the now. Pray for him. He has not changed. God has not changed. God is now. So I'm going to speak to those people. Maybe you're missing the presence of God. Maybe you're saying, I am tired. I was listening to Pastor Tolian, and I can identify. I go to places where they're dead. They, they changed Christianity. They converted it into a religion. Yep. Christianity is not a religion. It's not a bunch of rules. No. People get upset when I said Christianity is not a bunch of rules. Christianity is life. Yeah. Yeah. Christianity is power. Christianity is the presence. It's a close relationship with God daily in Jesus' name. If you're watching right now and then you said, I, I really need a miracle in my body. Yeah. I really need healing in my body. Or yeah. you like uh, Miss Jen was saying about uh, being depression and you don't know what to do. And those pills, they don't work. <laughs> You need the power of God. Those things don't work. And Jesus is alive now. So I'm going to pray for you. If, you. if you're watching me, you're in depression. This is what the gospel is about. It's about something practical, something powerful, something for now. Not the past, but now. The gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, Jesus this is what Jesus did. Jesus preached. He taught. He taught teach he, he taught he preached he cast out demons and healed the sick now we preach and teach but we don't do the last two yeah we preach very nice we we teach very nice but what about casting out demons what about healing the sick what about we don't see it anymore let's bring it back the gospel of power so i'm going to pray for you father in the name of the lord jesus you, christ those people that are watching if you're in depression if you're in fear if you're going through crisis in your marriage or maybe legalism destroy your life wow. you don't want to go wow. to church hey right now let's go back to the church say god i'm coming back to you i want to close relationship with you father in the name of the lord jesus christ I rebuke every sickness. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke every disease. Thank you, I Lord. rebuke depression. I rebuke fear. I Mighty. rebuke cancer. I rebuke and I rebuke it Thank in the you, name God. of the Lord Jesus. God is opening eyes right now. Come on now. There's people healing. God, you just felt something on, heat now. in your eyes. Be healed right now. Ears are being opened right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's people with arthritis. Arthritis. You've been healed right now in the name of Jesus. There's Jesus. someone that you've been in a wheelchair for 14 years. Something happened to your back. Something happened to your back. You've just felt the power of God flowing through you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Thank Christ. Lord. That's what supernatural grace is. Healing, deliverance, taking out and healing you, transform the heart. Father, there's just someone watching. You are 42 years old. Your name is Mark. You with a beer and you trying to commit suicide three times. God is delivering you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be free right now. Be free. There's pastors watching. Pastors watching. You've been legalism destroy you and you don't want to go back into the ministry god is talking to you by the name tony tony you're watching and you're saying yes legalism destroy me and now i want the real deal i yep. want god i want yep. the presence i want the power father in the name of the lord jesus christ restore all those pastors and leaders to go back and to be in fire for jesus christ right now lord and those that are watching right now if you never given your life to jesus this is the moment this is the time this is what jesus said repent and believe repent you cannot believe until you repent i said you cannot believe until now. you repent yeah say with me i repent of all my sins i, I confess with my mouth with that my jesus mouth. christ that jesus is my lord and my savior i believe with all my heart that god the father raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Lord. I trust you and I believe in you. You are my Lord. Thank you for the finished work. I rest upon you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.
Oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know there's more people. There's some things going on. If you help me to pray, you know, Jan, there's so many people that they looking for... Somebody in need is looking for an answer. Yeah. Somebody in need is looking for an answer. Come on and they now. want a real answer. Come on now. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. And the Bible says, And they will have a, a form of godliness. Yeah. That word, that expression, form of godliness in the Greek means uh, something or mere appearance that had no relation to reality. Yeah. That's what religion is. Wow. Mere appearance that has no relation to wow. reality. Wow. Hey, wow. mere appearance that has no relation to reality. People want reality. Not an appearance. When I talk to you, I have seen the blind see. I have seen the dead see. I have seen the race, uh, the dead race. And I can tell you right now, Jesus is the reality. You must experience reality. If you tire of religion, this is the moment. You know what I need to minister? I need to minister. I need to activate those people in the supernatural. I need to activate. Stretch your hands toward with them. And we're going to pray for those leaders and people that are saying, I want reality. I'm tired of the mirrored appearance. When you're sick, when you're depressed, you must have reality because you need the power to be delivered. When you're sick, you need reality. You cannot be in a church that's supposed to say reality and continue to be depressed and continue to be sick and continue to be with cancer. We need reality. And that reality is the power of God. Father, in the name of the Thank Lord you, Jesus the Christ, I pray for those people that are watching. They're hungry for the fire of God. They're hungry for the supernatural. They're hungry for the presence of God. And right now, Father, I command you, be activated. Oh, now. to do miracle signs and wonders right now be activated release the presence of God those people that are watching right now receive that activation receive that impartation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ receive it amen and amen, amen. wow wow hallelujah if you want more of Pastor G, you are, what is your time on Sunday on TVN, your regular broadcast? 2.30 Eastern time. Okay. And then on other days uh, of the week? Wednesday, Wednesday? 8 a.m., Wednesday, and Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. Got it. And your show is about activating all of the us supernatural, into the, the supernatural. supernatural. Matt, the Lord uh, visited me. I had a visitation in my house. And the Lord uh, came in, a, in an audible voice. Fill the room with the presence of God. And he said, I have called you to bring my supernatural power to this generation. Yeah. That has been my assignment yeah. to the people. And you're doing it with passion. Thank you. And beautiful hair. <laughs> and, and by the way, let's, let's, do the, let's do the rest of the interview in Spanish. Yo sé por qué no tienes dinero. <laughs> Do you understand what I said? Sí, porque no tiene dinero. Yeah, yo sé porque no tiene dinero. <laughs> Ay caramba, ¿cómo te de mi cuatro? No cuatro, no. That's what he learned in high school, and yeah. he tried to repeat what he said. Yeah. I do have money. I, got I know. Dinero. <laughs> <laughs> Javen, go for it. Pastor Javen, go for it. And sometimes down. Feeling so lost Like no one's around But I pray hard And the one thing I found Is He hears my cry And He never lets me down oh. Clap your hands if you know you're going to be all right in the place today. Hallelujah. You may be down. Can't find your way. You got
got so many questions. I've been there. Don't know what to say. Just look up to him, yeah, yeah. And say a little prayer. I get some worshipers to say that with me. Oh, I, I'm all right. Somebody wave your hand right there. Say, oh, I, I'm all right. oh, I'm all right. hey, Somebody clap your hands right there. Give God praise. There's a prize. There's no better place to go when you're in need. I know He will see you through. And if you believe, He'll make it all right. If you know He's going to make it all right, somebody give Him a shout. Oh, I. Troubles, they just keep on rising. I'm not worried about it because I've learned to trust Him. Yes, so I can wave my hands and say, I'm all right. Yes. Wow, wow. I used to just say, I used to just say, Javen. Now I say Pastor Javen. Isn't that yeah. kind of strange? Pastor Javen, and his, avail- his music is available. Tell Easiest you what, thing you've is, got some pretty ladies uh, behind him yeah. over there, too. Thanks for those singers. And <laughs> Javen will be back to sing for us again. Amazing, uh, Javen. Make welcome, please, Leon Fontaine to Woo! the Praise the Lord program. Let me, let me explain one thing. Leon is not only uh, a TBN's partner in Canada, so... We're watching, and those viewing uh, this broadcast tonight in Canada, you're watching on the Miracle Channel or DirecTV or Dish Network. One of our family of networks. One of the family of networks is run by Leon. And and Leon, um, I'm going to jump into Spirit Contemporary, which is your book coming up, but I want you to... this is an interesting thing. We started off the program, you know, with uh, 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 Grace. Yeah. Okay, and then we kind of hit supernatural things right. with Pastor mm-hmm. G, and and so the idea of spirit contemporary. What are you meaning when we say the word spirit contemporary? What does that mean to you and to our viewers? Well, what's exciting is that I love the message of grace, okay, and the fact that the vertical relationship between me and God is secure, untouchable. I can't do a thing uh, to earn a better connection with God. But then I love all of the beautiful laws in the Word of God because they help me relate to the people on all my horizontal relationships. You know, I'm not going to kill them. (laughs) I'm not going (laughs) to lie to them. I'm not going to... So I just... I could listen to grace being shared all the time. Okay. But then I'm hooked into Brother Maldonado as well because he starts talking about power. Well, grace is God's power to change. Okay. Now, spirit contemporary is the fact, I was raised in a 
beautiful Pentecostal charismatic home. My dad brought in some of the greatest speakers and signs and wonders. We had church. I mean, we packed out the fronts. They fell in the, under the power. We covered them up when they were askew. You know what I mean? We drank <laughs> them and, and miracles and signs and wonders. It was awesome. I was raised in the most amazing Christian home. Then, my dad, when we went to a church in Selkirk, couldn't afford to hire me as a youth pastor, associate pastor, so I had to go and get my own job. I became a paramedic. And something absolutely shocked my world. I walked out onto the streets, and the calls that I had, the heartache, the people that died on me, the kids that died in my arms, picking up people who've been horribly raped and abused, and trying to keep them alive as I raced for the hospital, this little preacher's kid, raised in a beautiful church who saw the power of God and the miracles and the signs and the wonders in the church. I had nothing for them in the back of an ambulance wow. or in a turned over wreck you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning with rain. As they cut a hole in that side of that vehicle and put a belly pack on me and I got to wade into the bodies and secure you know, cervical collars and oral airways and oral pharyngeal and all that I had to do before we could get those... All of a sudden, I'd go home, and I mean, I would just weep and cry because I actually hadn't seen that world. I was second or third generation Christian, and so sec second and third generation Christians tend to just copy their parents, mm. and they've got to find Jesus for themselves. Yeah. They, they can kind of mimic that way of living, and they can love God, but they don't have the same awareness of the first generation that came out of the world and gave their lives to God. And, and so it was a, a, an eye-opener to me, and I began to look at getting signs and wonders on the streets. Wow. I wanted to know, God, can I pray for somebody in an intensive care ward where I don't have a beautiful singing choir, I don't have any catchers, but I got a doctor watching me like a hawk because I'm, I'm doing the oral, I'm doing the airway, got an ET tube down, I'm bagging him, this guy's conscious, but he's dying. What do I do? Do, you know, do I lay hands on him and say, stand back, God's man of powers in the air? And do I throw the body against the wall like Smith Wigglesworth did in his books? And, <laughs> like, it just doesn't work in the real world today. They're going to arrest me, I'm going to lose my job, I'm going to be fired. <laughs> And so I had to learn to see the power of God move Come on now. in an intensive care ward, wow. in a busy restaurant as a man asked me for help, in a hospital room with unsaved family watching me mm -hmm. and giving me permission to pray. I had to learn to release the power. I had to learn to control the, the, the situation, as I, I, and if you could say it that way, and see miracles. But I couldn't use anything that I'd been taught in the church. Wow. By that I mean how to run a miracle service, how to run a miracle crusade. I read all the books and I love them. I mean, I will never knock. Like Brother Mulder, I love what he was talking about, the services, and the, oh, and going to the streets. But now I want to teach people who are watching today who it's a business guy at a board meeting. He's walking the hallways as the VP of finance, and the owners of the company are not going to allow him to push his religion, is how they look at it in any way. So how does he share his faith? How does he share his Jesus without getting fired? How can he rise up the corporate ladder with great respect and everybody in love with him? Because the way much of the religious church world has taught us to do it only works in a church, mm -hmm. doesn't work. And so spirit contemporary is somebody full of Holy Spirit operating in a contemporary way. It is the answer to empty churches. It is the answer to families whose kids won't serve God because they don't want to be weird like mom and dad. It is the answer to business people. In fact, most of the spirit contemporary people on the planet today are not pastors. They are business people who have had no choice. But as they are doing people's taxes and as they are policemen and nurses and doctors, they have had to learn to be contemporary in the workplace. They have not been able to just copy a typical pastor because most preachers, we simply show at the front, we give words of knowledge and a word from God and we can preach up a storm. I love it. 
I love, but it does not work. Anytime I stand up in a bar and start preaching to people, they're going to call the cops. If I do it in the hospital, they're going to walk me out. In fact, I was literally pulled into the office twice by the CEO, of the, the administrator of the hospital, and written up, and they were going to put on my permanent record that I was forbidden to, in, or I'm in Canada, to push my beliefs on, in any form. I was not allowed to talk about religion. They said, if you talk about religion, if there's a religious question, you will call for one of the, uh, what do you call a chaplain. chaplain. You call for a chaplain. It is not your area. You will not bring it up. They tried to shut me down, and I had to literally fight with the union, union on my side because I was a paramedic to get them to leave alone. And I finally realized, I'm not fighting this fight. I'm going to get wise as a serpent, mm -hmm. harmless as a dove. Mm -hmm. And that is when I begin to see miracles explode. I don't see, uh, the miracles I share aren't from the fronts of conferences, although I've done them, or from the fronts of a church. It's me and one guy dying on his deathbed and getting a chance to talk to him with nobody around and then pray with him for that miracle. It's me bending over a body as the guy's gurgling blood out of his nose and laying hands on him before others get here and speaking life and commanding that internal bleed to stop because I can't stop an internal bleed. I've got to race for the hospital. It's going to take surgery to tampon out or to, to correct that and watch God do a miracle there or a dead body come back to life in front of a doctor or, I mean, growths disappear in front of a surgical team. Now, that freaks people out <laughs> and, uh, because you're right in the real world where they lie or talking to a business guy. And, and so spirit contemporary is about being full of the spirit of God, but when you minister, contemporary is always changing. If I'm going to talk to you as a business person. I must be able, like Paul said, with the Jew, when I'm with the Jews, I'm as a Jew. When I'm with the Greeks, I'm as a Greek. When I'm with those with the law, I'm, I'm as with the law. Without the law, I'm as without the law. Like whatever way I want to talk, Holy Spirit will help me. He's so relevant. And then I've got a biker, Hell's Angel, sitting over here, and I've shared Jesus with some of the toughest guys. And I turn around, I don't, I don't even talk about the same subject matter with this guy. I just turn to him, full of the Spirit of God, but now I'm going to be contemporary to him. And when I'm up in our Northland, amongst our beautiful First Nations, our Indian people in Canada, I've sensed a way to take the presence of God, the power of God, and to be contemporary to them. And it's amazing to me. I can almost sit with any person, and in a matter of time, this, that I can be contemporary, or you could call it relevant, or you could call it respectful. Hmm. Like I shared a story with you one time we were on about speaking to a, a very powerful grand chief in our country who is brilliant lawyer, I mean, amazing guy. And he starts telling me, we haven't having breakfast together, he starts telling me how that he operates in the spirit realm with his Indian religion. And so he's an Ojibwe medicine man, I, I think that's how we, what he called himself, and he smokes the pipe. And he began to talk about how he would bring peace to the circle of leaders and bring them to the table, and it's the pipe. And then his drum, he's a drummer, and how as he drums that the spirit of his drum would bring peace to the village that he was visiting. And I'm listening to him. And like, people can listen to that, and you can think, well, I hope you rebuked him and set him straight and told him <laughs> you know, all about where demons come into play. No, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. We'd do that in church, maybe. But I just said, wow. Now I've got to be contemporary to this guy. I've got a breakfast with him. Someone set it up. It's rare to be in the, in the presence of a man this powerful in our nation. And I said, Grand Chief, I can tell you depend upon the spirit realm to lead your people. There's nothing wrong with that statement as a Christian. He goes, yes. I said, can I share with you the nine gifts that Holy Spirit gives me to lead the church and the schools and the churches and the television station that I lead with all? I would be interested to hear that. And so I begin to share with them how a word of knowledge, when I don't know what's going on, Holy Spirit will just reveal to me something. Or when someone's not speaking truth, I can discern. Or how that when something, and I begin to go through in just a few of the gifts and just kind of teach. And he's looking at me and he's on the edge of his seat. I haven't corrected him. I haven't slammed him. I haven't cast a spirit out of him. I, I haven't done any of these things that I've been taught to do. I respected him. I looked him in the eye and respected this man has climbed to the top of our nation in the First Nations. He's a brilliant lawyer. This is what he believes. 
I don't mock his beliefs. I don't argue with him. I don't debate with him. I don't kind of look with my condescending Christianese look at him. I honored that man. And I, didn't have, I don't have to believe what he believes, but I need to respect him and honor him. That respect and honor opened his heart wide open. And he said to me, I have heard that Jesus is the Savior of the spirit realm. I said, yes, he is the doorway to accurate understanding of the spirit realm. Could we speak of that next time? Wow. I said, yes. To me, that spirit, cont- if I'd have just started going, well, I disagree with you, you understand you're messing with, and maybe tell him evil, sp- or whatever I could have said to this man, would have slammed that door shut. Mm-hmm. But something powerful took place that day. You see, when Jesus went to the woman who was caught in adultery, and they dragged her into the circle, and they said, the law says to stone her, what do you say, Jesus? And Jesus, he looks around, he says, let him who has no sin cast the first stone. Well, they all started dropping their rocks. Fact was, Jesus could have thrown a stone. He didn't have any sin. But here's what happened. They brought the woman in. Here's the regular people out here. Here's her. She's lower than low. She's an adulteress. She's nothing. The second that they threw her at the feet of all these Pharisees, And he looked at this woman, and he said, Woman, where are thine accusers? She said, There are none, Lord. He reached down to a heart broken and disgusted with herself, and and he brought her up off the bottom, and he put her equal with everybody else. Mm -hmm. He respected her and honored her in the middle of her failures and her crises. And he brought her, and in respecting her like that, her heart opens up. Go thy way, he says, and sin no more. This acceptance of people is not an acceptance of their sin. This respecting people is key to being spirit contemporary. Contemporary is how do I respect? How do I speak in a way that we can understand? So I normally shut my mouth. I got two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. And it's amazing how as they're talking, God will give me a doorway. It's like I just be quiet and listen. When I listen, I don't listen like this. (laughs) I listen, eyes locked on, respecting him, honoring his opinion. It doesn't matter if I disagree. He is a person made in the likeness and the image of God. And until I love him, accept him, and forgive him the way he is, his heart will not open to me. But if I love him, I call it laugh, L-A-F, love him. And love means, by the word, the word love means to value. Mm. That word has a very strong value. And I must accept him the way he is. I'm not, well, I'm going to accept him once he gets saved, born again, spirit filled, tongue talking, devil stomping. No, no. I'm going to accept him the way he is. And I'm going to forgive him when he hurts me, because he will. He's going to say something. He will. I'm going to laugh, L A F, love, accept, forgive. And then his heart, everybody's heart opens when they sense and know love. This gospel is a gospel of love. But the people who are sharing it, share it from a condes- often a condescending way of, I have truth. I have an answer. Okay, hurry up and say your spot, because I'm going to come back with my spot. Yeah. And it's not in any way. So I found that when I look at someone and listen, and I become their friend, their heart opens up, and now a miracle. You see, people would open their hearts to Jesus in one teaching. That widow woman who crawled on her knees through the crowd and grabbed his hem probably heard him teach once. You know what I mean? That man who came to Jesus and said, my son commits suicide almost every day. He throws himself in the fire and in the water. If you can do anything. And Jesus had looked at him and said, hey, you know, all things are possible if you believe, if you can believe. And he quickly just changed in a second. See, this man could not get a miracle with the Old Testament law. The disciples prayed for him, couldn't get him a miracle. But Jesus had a way of speaking to him that his heart just went, whoosh, and bam, a miracle took place. Preaching is not about three years of building their faith. It's not about doctrine indoctrinating them so they can finally get a miracle by building their faith through all these levels. And I understand what they're trying to say. It's the faith that it's a finished work. When I need faith, I need to be to know that Jesus qualifies me for this miracle. Beautiful. You know, we were uh, talking a little bit earlier, and, and I remember something you said earlier today that it was, it was like what you're, what you're trying to teach, Jesus 
walked around and very few things he did or said were in side of the church of his day or inside the temple and 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 inside a synagogue that he was on the streets he was on the byways the highways the and so Jesus was who he was when he was out amongst the people yeah. and 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 really that's kind of what you're trying to teach us I'm you know what just popped in my head you, you I don't know that you've ever sat with us like this for a, a whole praise the Lord program do you remember a vision you had where you saw the glory of God oh, yeah. in where the streets the street wow. and theaters, theaters and, Af- and Africa and and you mm-hmm. saw mm-hmm. not a church building no. she saw the, the and you, t- just that was it that was it so she it was a it was a vision that she saw where the glory of god were in were in movie theaters in the streets and street ministry and in africa yes and so the idea that we're limiting God and limiting the fact that we have the opportunity to share yeah. and be spirit, fully spirit, fully contemporary is kind of what you're trying to teach us. That's beautiful. You see, the issue is the gap between clergy and laity. We laugh at some of the other religions where they have, they really make somebody famous or they give them titles and they genuflect to them and stuff. But the charismatic move has the same thing. We use the word anointing, and we're looking for somebody with a stronger anointing. We're looking for wow. somebody. Yet the anointings, ooh, okay, the anointings of the Old Testament were different. <laughs> There's anointing for the high priest, an anointing for uh, the king, an anointing for the prophet. There is unique anointings on Samson, but in the New Testament, Jesus said, "I am." the anointed one. He has the anointing and he's inside of every one of us. So I begin to teach our churches that it's not about me. In our church, I stopped letting him call me pastor and, and, and everyone doesn't have to do this, but I wanted to shrink myself down until they looked at me. Well, I can do that. Well, I can do that. Well, I can do that. Leon can do it. I can do it. I don't want to raise myself up. You know, so that then as I teach, here's how Holy Spirit flows in their offices, in the streets. And so we get every service in our church, we read the mir- about five to seven of the miracles that have come in that week, and none of them are prayed for by our pastors. None of them happen in the church. They are all, and we only use a five or seven because of time. We have to get one hour services done, one after the other after the other. And they read them, and it's just amazing to hear a mom say, I laid hands on my daughter, a bus hit her. Her body flew 40 feet. She wasn't breathing. I touched her. And she came back to life. A paramedic was watching. He is taking her pulse. And he said, this one, the child's gone. This mom prays. A mom prays. You know, another mom. The, t- the car ran over my three-year-old daughter. Her body's laying there. The tracks are all... I showed me the tracks on her skin. I where the truck rolled over her. And this kid is laying there lifeless. And she lays hands on it, the mama, and gets a miracle. I want to see the, the signs and the wonders and the beauty of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding and speaking through us. But I want to see it done in a contemporary way where it can be done in Walmarts and nobody would know, where wow. we don't have to embarrass people and saying, if someone walks by and say, well, hey, can I pray for you? And the guy's in a busy restaurant and you think you're being bold for Jesus, but you're just embarrassing the poor man. So I want to be so loving, so respectful of people that when I walk into their world that I can fit myself like Holy Spirit can to the need, the personality type, the language, the fear, and within seconds find out how to deliver the gift that God's got wow. within every one of us wow. to give to them. Beautiful. Wow. Leon Fontaine, his program is right here on TBN. What, uh, you're, I see it on Friday night uh, at about 9.30, is that right, on the West I Coast? So. I think 9.30 uh, on Friday nights. Leon and you're here, you're also a part of the Miracle Channel, head of the Miracle Channel, our TBN family of network partner in Canada. We and, love uh, the Fontaine. And uh, <laughs> uh, when we, uh, Javen's going to sing, and after that, uh, why don't you just take your liberty and, and share miracles and healing, uh, pray for the people, Good. and just uh, take, your, take your position up there and do your thing. You can do that? Love Is that to. what you do? You love to do that? I'd love to, yeah. Javen, uh, Pastor Javen, sing for us. And then Leon's going to be back. 
Let's just worship the Lord all over the studio right now. Some of you just begin to speak a word of atmosphere into the atmosphere. Somebody might want to say glory or hallelujah. Come on. Let's just worship the Lord wherever you are, in your homes, wherever you are. Just begin to worship the Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your grace is sufficient for my soul. And your love has never let me go. I would be nothing without you. Hallelujah. The greatest thing I've done is give my life to you. So I lift my hands. So I lift my hands. With my soul, I'll sing. With my soul, I'll sing. Come on, you are my God. You are my God. King of kings. Emmanuel. Holy hands towards heaven. Oh, we love you. Somebody tell God you love him. Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you. Yeah, yeah. Say, all I am. All I am. I present to you. I present to you. Yes. Give my trust. You've always brought me through. Submit my life. Submit my life to you. I to your will. your will, so I worship you. I need some worshipers. Say, yes, I worship you. Say, yes, I worship you. Say, you are my God. worship in this place today. Come on, you can do a lot better than that. Give God worship in this place today. 
Javen has been singing for us all night. Okay, I want I want to give you kind of kind of the there's your microphone. I want to give you kind of the final word. Where what what changed in your mind about when you grew up and you understood getting saved every Sunday night and then when grace really grabbed you? What what what's the Isn't it just an amazing revelation? Yeah. To everybody? I yeah. I mean to just be able to just say, you know, that I fall into grace. You can't fall out of grace. That's an interesting thing that the world says, well, you fell out of grace. You fall into grace. This is a dispensation of grace. You know, there's so many things that we Growing knew grace. about, but you didn't just connect that word to my healing of depression and wow. healing and things that are just so beautiful. And we're doing it now. I watch Creflo Dollar every day yeah and he is amazing do you love him isn't he amazing <laughs> he was preaching at telephone he said something so funny i still laugh about it he was just preaching away at telephone in atlanta we were up there and he said now don't make me call on his name <laughs> <laughs> almost fell under the chair it was funny he was funnier saying it but now I use that all the time. Don't make me call his name. <laughs> but that name is healing. That yeah. name is life. That name is our salvation. It's just amazing grace. So grace is for your amazing. generation too. It's not just a young person thing. I wish we'd have known it. Wow. Wow. I think the older I, the older I get, the more I know I need it. Wow. You know? The more you understand and have high regard for the, the law, the more you the more understand the amazingness of grace. I am the chief sinner of all, <laughs> right so here. Paul. Your hand is in front of my face. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Yeah. laughs> See, that proves it. Thank you. Thank you for hosting with us, Mom. Oh, I love it. My you. little pink-haired Thank Mama. You. We came down to see about the beautiful trailer park mm -hmm. here and the TV station and and was so... You don't wear a wig, do you? Yes, I do. Do? You do? You wear a wig? That is a wig? Really? Yes. Okay. Are those your real eyelashes? No. Okay. They're fake? Are these my real lips? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this studio is, is new. We've got a new uh, Absolutely studio. beautiful studio. We're in South Florida. Yeah. We love South Florida. These yeah. people here love Jesus here in South Florida. And... Uh, and we're so glad you've been watching around the world because yeah. TBN was raised up so that you could hear about this amazing grace. I love it. And, you uh, used to have a wrinkle right there. What happened? <laughs> you know what? You can go to ITBN on your computers, on your phones. You used to have little can... short teeth. What <laughs> happened to you? Gosh. And you can watch this program over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> you used that to have brown I hair. <laughs> what happened to you? It's just a download app on your phone, <laughs> ITVN. And you know, you can actually get a TVN app on your phone in how many languages now? What? I haven't heard a word you said. You know what? I we love you, and uh, we, we want to... We wanna <laughs> We want to turn this over to a, a very help. spiritual man, grace, uh, grace. Leon. God. And and Pastor Leon, you take your liberty. Tell Thank us you. about Jesus. Tell us about miracles and pray for us. May Go I say? It. Yeah? No. That he, no, he's going to be at Holy Land. Yes. And it'll play on TBN. Beautiful. Good. So he's going to be there. So Holy that's the only time you said Holy Land all night. No, I said it to the audience okay. earlier. Okay, Holy Land experience. Uh, God's there. coming. We love you, Leon. Go for it. Take it away. Uh, now you can tell why we love this family so much. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus had 12 friends. He handpicked them, and he taught them for what Bible experts would think would be about three to a three and a half years. He showed them as he walked on the water, as he fed the thousands he raised that, bo that boy from the funeral, from the dead, handed him back to his widowed mom. He taught these men in phenomenal ways. You, I mean, if you're going to go to university or you're going to go to Bible school or seminary, 
you may as well just hang out with Je- hanging out with physical Jesus, walking the streets and being trained by him would have been the best. But it wasn't enough. When he died on the cross, he died alone. They abandoned him, all twelve. Where was the man who Jesus cast that spirit out of his suicidal boy? Where was the widow woman who had a son raised back from the dead? Where was blind Bartimaeus who could see? Where were all of these people that Jesus had touched and trained? It wasn't just the 12 that followed him. He trained 70, and then there was 500, and there were those that came around him and followed him, and nobody stuck to Jesus. And he trained them personally. I've got news for you. You can be trained by the best, and you won't be able to do this supernatural life. You could have Jesus in a physical body come and stay at your house for three years and you could never be trained well enough to function and operate in how he's prepared and wants you and I to. This shocked me when I went on this study. I started thinking, okay, I've got to find out how the disciples were trained. Because if I can figure out how Jesus trained those disciples, and then I can train all of our churches and leaders and get on TV and train people to... to then I found out that he actually didn't train one person that, that stuck to him when the going got tough. They abandoned him. They left him bothered me as I began my research and just began to look from this angle. And then he made this statement like, hey, you're going to do what I do and greater if I go. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you go, you're the trainer. You, you're the, the Christ. You're the son of the living God. You're here to train us so, so we can't do what you do till you go? He said, yeah, because Holy Spirit is going to come. We need to remove the mysticism and, 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 and stop talking about all these unique anointings and you got a unique anointing for this and, you got a, and we got all these doctrines and stuff. Listen to me, it's so beautiful, powerful, and simple. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came into that upper room and they were all filled with the Spirit, those same 12 men who were instructed personally by Jesus for three years and failed him, all of a sudden get up and he preaches a message. Thousands come to know Jesus Christ. Every one of those men except one had, were tortured and killed for their faith. The women and the men who now are healed by the apostles and the early church. They were hung on crosses as far as the eye could see, fed to lions, and we don't have a record of anybody recanting and coming back and saying to, to God, you know, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give in and I'll renounce my faith. Holy Spirit, He came to be on the inside of you and I. And the twelve disciples who had learned to trust Jesus in a physical body, now learned to trust his presence on the inside of them. Today we've had two amazing teachers before I even got up here. I love the message of grace. I love the fact that if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. So it says in 1 John, and he'll bring you over to His grace, His love, His life. I love the fact that we're designed for miracles, signs, and wonders. God began to show me when I worked in the hospital to reach out and begin to pray with people, and miracles begin to happen. But it, I can't tell you that the miracles happened like in a church or like all the books that I've read of the great men of old from the healing uh, revivals. Instead, it was done as I walked into a room with no one around and laid hand on a baby scheduled for surgery because nothing would pay. It was just born. Nothing would pass through its bowels. Had it cried straight, couldn't sleep. The pain was so bad, it's scheduled to open it up. And I remember walking in there, and there's no one around. I said, oh, actually, the nurse said, can I have a coffee break? I said, I was the paramedic. I said, I'll watch the baby. And as there's no one around, I laid hands on it. It just said, be healed in Jesus' name. 
And for the first time in that entire two days, apparently, according to this nurse, this baby just stopped crying and went to sleep. When she walked back in the room, she goes, she thought the baby had died. She goes, oh, this baby's not crying. What's going on? I says, oh, I don't know. Um, he's just sleeping. It's sleeping? Because I worked there, I was able to follow up, and a preoperative examination said that for some reason they found that it was completely obstructed, the bowel, but it's wide open now and totally fine. Miracle after miracle. For those that are watching, you've heard me share a little bit as I was talking with the crouches on the couch about spirit contemporary. And I want you to remember what you heard in the first speaker, Tullian, when he said it's grace. It's grace. Miracles don't have to be earned. Miracles don't have to have you be good enough. You don't have to go through a checklist and figure out, can I get a miracle today? That widow woman got a miracle with Jesus talking to her for just a few minutes. That when you look at the miracles of the Bible, I've noticed all they do is get rid of the condemnation because their hearts are condemning them because of what they've done wrong. And the message of grace says when you accept Him, that it's gone. And God is greater than your heart. You're living in condemnation. You're trying to figure out why you can't get healed. None of those, any book you've read about why you could throw it. Jesus is here to do miracles in your life. And I love I want to pray with you in just two minutes. And I'd love for you to call the number that you see on the screen. And I'd, we've got prayer teams here at TBN that would love to pray with you. We'll put you th that prayer request on prayer lists where people are praying for it. And we'd love to have you call. In fact, go to your phones now. I'm going to pray in just a couple minutes. And then just go to your phones and call those prayer requests in. But I want your heart to be open. I want the condemnation just pushed away. and Just hope. Just get hope back. If I can just get your heart just over into hope, over into faith, bam, the miracles can take place. And you know, when you do go to your phone, I'm going to ask you, would you give something to TBN? Why? You don't have to. You can't pay for prayer. But do you know that this miracle I'm talking about now, that touches lives, we want to bring it to the masses. It's so expensive, and your gift would be amazing. Help us get a miracle here to take this gospel to the world. Father, I pray right now for those that are watching. I pray for the believers who have been maybe waiting for miracles for a while and been taught that this, they haven't done things right. I pray a peace to come over that heart. I pray that you're greater than that condemnation. Help them to push it aside. For that one that doesn't know you, Father, touch them, I pray. And in Jesus' name, I ask to heal that physical body. Let the pain move off. Let that troubled mind just be touched by Jesus. Touch them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you. Give us a call. Let us know what your prayer request is. We want to get you a miracle. Maybe you could give something and help us with a miracle here as well. Love you. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, send to Anna, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ in your life, Call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world. 
Imagine, imagine a place where you can see the Bible come to life. From the Garden of Eden and the historic land of Israel, through the life of Jesus, to the glory of heaven. Imagine yourself at the Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Imagine ancient Israel through the wilderness tabernacle, the streets of Jerusalem, and the great temple. Imagine living in the days of David and Bathsheba, one of the Old Testament prophets, or the Apostle Paul. Imagine seeing the transforming power of Jesus come to life in those you've only read about. Imagine being an eyewitness to the life of Jesus, his miracles, his love, his sacrifice, and his final victory. Imagine being in the upper room for communion, following Jesus into baptism, walking through historic and peaceful gardens, or praying at the Wailing Wall. Imagine seeing the great scenes from the life of Jesus depicted in stunning fashion. Imagine the journey of God's Word to the ages, from tablets to scrolls to the printing press. Imagine the life and work of angels yesterday and today. Imagine being in the ark or the belly of a whale, crossing the Red Sea, or walking on the water with Jesus. Imagine this. And then, see it at the Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Plus, Miracle Moments, the Jerusalem Model, Bethlehem, the Jesus Boat, the Stations of the Cross, special guest speakers and musicians, the stunning Church of All Nations Auditorium, and the Crystal Living Waters. Can you imagine it? Then live it. Imagine yourself at TBN's Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida.